Give me two refs. All right, guys, we are back in my garage for another video. And today we're going to be talking about the Rev2 board from Pro Tuning Freaks. I know a little while ago I made a video talking about how they originally introduced this to us and helped us understand how it was going to work. But now that it's officially kind of released, I wanted to give you guys a quick update as they've shared a lot more new information on what we can expect and how you can take advantage of this if you're planning on going this route. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about all the information we know so far, and hopefully you guys find this video useful. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So again, let's just rip the Band-Aid off and say it out loud. The Rev2 board is a competitor with the Motive Reflex controller. So everything that you've come to expect with the Motive Reflex is going to be implemented generally with the Rev2 board. But Pro Tuning Freaks, of course, has a tuning platform, so they can do a lot more to integrate the Rev2 board with their tuning platform to make it as complete of a solution as possible. And that's basically what they're taking advantage of here. So you're going to have next level integration with the tune and the controller so that everything works together as one. Now, some high level features that we can expect here is this is going to be basically a controller for your auxiliary fueling and needs to make more power above what the stock DME can control. It is all going to be flashed directly through the boot mode tuning suite. So everything that you've become accustomed to as far as setting up maps, adapting tables and things for the different cars that you might be tuning. All of that will be a capability with the Rev2 board. So it'll be kind of like one seamless flash. Everything will work together and communicate with each other. Now, a big thing that they've been highlighting is this communicates over FlexRay. So this is kind of the next step in communication technology compared to CAN. And we're going to see a lot faster speeds, a lot more reliable data transmission. And basically everything's just going to work more seamlessly. So this is kind of like the new standard and what a lot of especially like higher end companies and higher end vehicles are moving to, but this is going to be the first kind of aftermarket solution for a regular consumer that uses this flex rate communication. They also increased the inputs and outputs, so now it has a lot more capability for things that it can control, as well as the data that it can read to make sure it's operating everything safely. And it is IP66 certified, which basically just validates it for certain amounts of dirt and water intrusion. It is basically designed from the ground up to be mounted in your engine bay and handle whatever elements you'll experience during your normal commute. Now let's go ahead and talk about the details on this Rev2 board and keep in mind there are kind of two different things that are merging together here. One of course is the Rev2 board that does all of the controlling, but also there is the custom ROM that has been improved. It was originally released for our cars, you know, several years ago now, and that added capability for things like flex fuel and anti-lag and map switching. But now we are releasing custom ROM V2, which adds even more features and just supports those integrations with the Rev2 board. So starting off with the Rev2, the most important thing that most people are thinking about is port injection. So yes, this does control port injection. Again, it integrates with your boot mode flash. So you'll be able to basically scale how much fuel is going to the DI injectors as well as how much is going to the port and match that for any given scenario where you want there to be a balance between the two. Now, of course, it does sequential port firing, which we don't talk about as much anymore because pretty much all the newer ones do it now. But it is very important because a lot of the older controllers just did batch firing where all six injectors would open up and just spray as much fuel as possible. Now it is sequential, so it will only open up injectors for the cylinder that's basically intaking air. So when the valves open, that injector will spray and it'll suck the air fuel mix into combustion chamber. And it of course can control port injection based on a lot of different things. Flex fuel is a big one, so it will be able to monitor your flex fuel levels and scale your fueling appropriately. It will also be able to scale it based on boost as well as RPM. So you really only want it to turn on 
when it's needed and you can control that in your boot mode tune with the Rev2 board. Now something cool that I thought they highlighted here is this isn't just your regular port injection implementation. They actually are using the exhaust flap controller communication to manage your port injector directly from the DME. So again, you're gonna flash everything directly through your boot mode tune to dial in your port injection with the Rev2 board, but they're kind of hijacking that line of communication. So instead of all of it coming directly from a second controller, it can basically be integrated with the DME and run that way. And it still maintains your exhaust flap control. So some really cool, unique things there. And that's just kind of one of the first highlights. Now, the other thing of course is boost control. So a lot of us are moving to upgraded turbos. And if your turbo does not maintain the stock electronic wastegate, you're going to have external wastegates that need to be controlled. So you can wire these up directly to your Rev2 board and it will be controlled just like an electronic stock wastegate. You can scale boost, you can adapt the profile based on where you've got fuel capacity, where it makes the most power, you know, all of that can be dialed in within your tune. It's also really cool because again, they can scale it based on flex fuel. So as you have more ethanol, you can run more boost safely and it'll allow you to do that automatically. It will also allow you to cut boost in case you hit one of your safeties, which we'll talk about a little more later, but all of that will be integrated into the Rev2 so that you can basically put your car into limp in case something is going wrong. It can also do it based on map. So maybe you've got a low boost map and a high boost map and you can switch between those maps and each one will have a different boost profile, a different max boost, you know, whatever your tuner sets it up to be. It even allows you to do boost by gear or boost by speed, which we already had capabilities of some of that with the stock DME and like a stock turbo, but now you'll be able to do that with an aftermarket turbo, even if it has external wastegates. Now, the way that that works is you're going to basically take the plug for your stock electronic wastegate and plug that directly into the Rev2 board. So that way it can communicate with the DME and manage all of the data that you're sending to the wastegates that way. So it will make it a little more plug and play, a lot less wires just hanging around in the engine bay. Like some of us have had to experience as we start deleting things and changing how they work. Now it will all work through that Rev2 board. It also of course can control your other fuel upgrades. So things like low pressure fuel pumps or meth injection can all be controlled by the Rev2 board. It can even control nitrous. So if you've got that set up to only spray at certain gears or maybe in certain maps, you've got a map where it runs more boost and you spray on top of it and one where you don't, all of that can be selected and set up inside of your boot mode tune now. So it'll be wired up to the Rev2 board and it'll only activate nitrous when it's supposed to and it'll spray exactly as much as you need. You can set up a progressive spray pattern and just a lot of different things that you can do there to scale in nitrous and use it to your advantage. And it also has additional safeties. So you can set up things basically for your bottle pressure to make sure that it's only going to be activating when it's safe to do so. Now, I think one of the coolest things I saw that I did not expect to see is wheelie control. And this is especially important for those of you guys that drag race. If you've got, you know, X drive cars or even rear wheel drive cars with really sticky tires, you might experience times where the front end of your car tries to come up. And while it looks cool for pictures and stuff like that, it's definitely not ideal for racing. It's not fast. And if you do it big enough, when you come down, you can definitely damage things. So it's not ideal. And what they are basically doing is adding the capability to monitor a ride height sensor. And if the front end of the car comes above a certain threshold, it will adjust your boost and your timing so that it will reduce power and help the car come back down. So think of it almost like traction control, trying to manage your wheel spin. This is going to manage, you know, power to limit how much the front end of the car comes up. So something that you can completely set up from scratch with your tuner based on your needs, your car setup and stuff like that, but it should help you, you know, at least keep things safe, especially if you're trying out a new tune and you don't know exactly how it's going to go. And another thing that they mentioned they're going to have is line lock control, which is again, for those of you that are drag racing, it will now allow you to warm up the tires really well, you know, avoid overheating the brakes or having any issues getting that burnout done quickly. This will make sure you have the most effective burnout possible. Now, those are a lot of outputs and things that the Rev2 box can control, but there are also a lot of inputs and things that it can monitor to make sure that everything is safe within your car. And this is, I think, another really big deal. I know a lot of you guys were saying, well, this seems kind of like the same old stuff that we've seen before but hopefully now you understand there are some new capabilities as well. And it goes even further by adding safeties around all of those new features. So it's got a lot of the things that you would expect. Again, it can monitor flex fuel and making sure that 
your boost is at a safe limit, your timing is at a safe limit based on the fuel that you're running. It also has a fuel pressure monitor, so it can monitor your fuel pressure and make sure that it doesn't go below a certain threshold. Again, it can also monitor the bottle pressure for your nitrous, so it makes sure that it's up to an adequate pressure so you can get good atomization and a good spray. And you can even have a coolant pressure sensor. So this is primarily for people that want to make sure like they're not going through a head gasket or lifting the head. It will monitor your coolant pressure so that you know that everything is safe there. Now this is the first time I've seen a controller that has dedicated EGT monitors. And this is really important because we monitor AFRs in our downpipe. That's a great way to know that our car is running safely. The EGT takes that to the next level. So if you really want to have your car as safe as possible, especially for a lot of these guys that are pushing a thousand plus horsepower, this is something that can definitely save your engine because now you can add an EGT sensor before the turbo, monitor the temperatures that are coming out of the combustion chamber, and that can tell you if something's running lean, specifically in a certain cylinder or you know anything that could be causing an issue and put safeties around that before it causes damage. It also has a lot of advanced safeties for your meth system, so it'll monitor meth flow. It'll even monitor the level in your meth tank, so making sure that you don't run out of meth before you floor it and potentially lean out your engine or run into other issues. And of course, it can monitor the ride height as well, which we previously talked about. So again, a lot of cool things that it can read and just make sure that everything is as safe as possible. And if any of those things go outside the parameters that you've deemed safe, it can shut it down and make sure that you don't damage anything. Now, like I said, Rev2 board is really only a part of the story. I feel like they haven't talked as much about the custom ROM V2, or maybe I just haven't seen it, but some of these details I think are really key to supporting why the Rev2 is gonna be transformational for anybody using boot mode. The big thing here is you're going to have advanced capabilities above the existing custom ROM features. One big one is you can scale any map or T-map sensor now. So even above the stock sensor, you can even go above that. And so especially for B58 cars that want to upgrade their map sensors, you're going to be able to do that and scale anything within the tune so that you can accurately read your boost levels. You also can create up to 36 custom codes inside of the tune so that it will flag an issue and you can even throw a check engine light in case anything goes outside of a threshold. So things like knock, if you experience knock or excessive timing corrections, it will flash the check engine light so that you know that something is wrong. It can monitor things like your fuel pressure, your nitrous bottle pressure, temperatures, all of these things and throw custom codes based on what's happening. And if any of that happens, it can cut ignition, it can cut fuel, it can cut boost, and basically put the car into a limp mode so that you don't you know, cause any damage or hopefully limit anything that could have happened. I think this is really key because a lot of us drive our cars regularly. I mean, we might log it once a month, once every couple months, or maybe it's just when an update comes out. But one day you floor your car and it breaks up, you have misfires or whatever, and you have no idea what happened, and you're scared or not really comfortable with doing it again and running a log because it could damage something. So now this gives you a better opportunity of having a code or something that can lead you down an understanding of what went wrong. Maybe it's not something that's built into the native DME coding, but it's something that you've added on with this boot mode tool. So now you have a DTC to show you exactly what happened when you did that pull. So I think this is really helpful for a lot of you that want to have as much information as possible without always having to have your phone plugged in. Another thing I like to see is that there is heal time for these DTCs. So let's say you get a fuel pressure too low. Like I've had that before when my low pressure fuel pump wasn't set up properly and it ran low on fuel during a pull. My check engine light came on, I lifted and everything was good to go. But when that check engine light comes on, it's probably gonna put your car into a limp mode that you can't get into without clearing the codes. Well, if you continue driving on the highway and it sees that your fuel pressure is holding fine, you can set a parameter where after you know five minutes or whatever, this code will automatically clear. If it's not experiencing that same issue anymore, it will go away and allow you to drive normally. So you can set that up around certain parameters based on what you deem fit. So you don't always, again, have to plug into your phone and clear check engine look codes or anything like that. It should basically suppress it and you'll see it as a shadow code or something so you'll know what happened while you can still drive your car without it being in limp mode. So lots of options here, lots of capabilities. Highly recommend working with your tuner to understand exactly what you want to set up, but really it's whatever you deem fit. And keep in mind that works without Rev2. These are just 
custom ROM v2 features that you can use once you update your tune to use the latest custom ROM. So the Rev2 board it adds even more capability, but this is just baked into the standard boot mode tune itself. Now the unfortunate part, which I mean, it's kind of good news and bad news. We've gotten mixed feedback on this part, but as usual, it's not released for everybody. For one, they've actually only released it to certain tuning shops. So you'll need to check with your local tuners to see if they have the Rev2 boards or if they're capable of setting those up. And it's only for S58 cars with clone DMEs currently. They said it will roll out and eventually be available to everybody. So I'm assuming it'll be like available in their store where anybody can purchase it online. And then they'll start adding the capability to other platforms as well. First one being Gen 2 B58s. Then I'm assuming Gen 1 B58s after that and probably the other platforms like N55 and S55. So we'll kind of have to see it's rolling out slowly like usual. It's just kind of one of those things where, one, you've got really high demand for a new platform that's been itching for new capabilities, so they released it for them first. They also have the most built-in features on their car that can take advantage of the Rev2 capability, so it kind of lends to give it to them first. And over time, hopefully, we get that to kind of trickle down to other people. But one thing they did mention is don't send your DME back to Fem2 yet. They are still, you know, I guess, implementing the new software for people that are trying to get their DMEs unlocked or updated to take advantage of the new custom ROM, but it should be coming soon. So just keep an eye on their social media for the latest updates so you know when that time will come. They're also working on sharing more information on what the features are going to do. So this is just what we know right now. I didn't want to wait because they've been kind of spreading this out over a long period of time. So I'm sure more information will come out later. So if you guys want me to release another video when the new information comes out, let me know. But hopefully over time we get a full picture of what the Rev2 will be able to do. So yeah, we're almost there. Uh, fingers crossed that it'll be released for everybody in the upcoming weeks. Hopefully this is what you guys were waiting on or looking for for everybody that's been holding out. And you probably have to hold on a little bit longer, but I definitely think it will be worth it for those of you that want to go this route. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below. Now the way that this works is you're basically going to take the stock electronic wastegate harness and plug that directly into the motor 